So I saw that you were running a course on stories and I thought, I know what, I'm going to pick your brain, Valentina, on stories because they're relatively new. So can you give the, the listeners a rundown on what they are and how they work? Sure. So stories have really come about through consumer behaviour because we're bored of the feed. So we're bored of the scroll, we just want to get through updates really quickly and stories are essentially in the moment pieces of content, whether it be a video or a photo, that will only last for 24 hours. So in terms of putting content up and the life expectancy of it, you know, can you give me real details on how that works, how you do that? Sure. So when stories only last for 24 hours, the idea is to make your content last as long as it can and to utilise it. So what we do have are called story highlights and they're the little circles that appear underneath someone's profile bio um, on Instagram and you can add your story's content to those highlights. And it means that the content firstly lives longer, but you can categorise the content that you add to your stories as opposed to it being in your feed. So in property and real estate, one of those highlight buttons might look like sold or auction or for lease, but then you might have things like community, uh, you might also have local, so all about you or something personal and team and culture. So that's just a snapshot of some of the categories. So that way you can create all this short term content, doesn't need huge production values. Um, you can actually just use your, your iPhone or your smartphone to be able to capture that content and then just save it by category. So it means that when me customer comes looking at you and I want to assess, I guess, you as an agency or an agent, I can click on one of those highlights to go, okay, let me have a look at what their team and culture is like and see if that makes a fit with me rather than having to go through your feed and work that out all on my own. And for people that do want to pre-plan, um, is it even possible to pre-plan this content or, you know, schedule it? Because we've been doing the, you know, the content into the feed via third-party tools and yeah. planning ahead of time. So has it put the cat amongst the pigeons in that regard? Look, you can still plan for a story and you can use uh, third-party tools to be able to schedule them in advance if you have them. But really, stories are about the moment right here and now. It's things that you want to capture that are happening on the fly. It could be ad auction in motion, um, which you can't really plan for in advance, but you can obviously then schedule that post for later on. So yes, definitely planning for your stories. And really, essentially, it's a whole nother platform. It's Instagram feed, Instagram stories, Facebook feed, Facebook stories, LinkedIn feed, LinkedIn live. It, I mean, the list goes on. So you do have to plan for it just as you would any other channel in your marketing mix. So a lot of agents say that they're challenged by social media marketing because, you know, they obviously they're busy and they're running around and um, so they look toward their uh, assistant or an admin person to assist them with that on, a, on the day to day in the moment content. So how, uh, how do you see that working? What could, how could that work as a team? So definitely as a team works the best. Uh, I have my own social media team that takes care of our planning and, and copywriting and the emojis that we're going to use and who we're going to tag and when those things go out. And that's usually starting with the basis of my diary or our diary as an agency to say what's going on, what have we got planned, um, what can we actually prep for. So if we're going to say we're doing a Christmas special, what is it that we're going to include and what's the key message that we're trying to get across. So being able to use your marketing team or your support team just to be able to say, well, what is it that we want to communicate? Why would our customer even care? And then what's the best format that we're going to create? So is it a short video? And if it's video, is it an interview format or is it straight down the barrel of a camera, which not many people are comfortable with? But the same way that you plan to get out of bed, beat the traffic, brush your teeth, you should have a plan for your marketing and social is a huge part of that. So if you value clean dental health, then you will brush your teeth. And if you value social media as a real estate agent or agency, then you will plan for that too. Very good point. I like the teeth <laughs> analogy. So Facebook has been talking for quite some time about the fact that they're going to eventually get rid of the feed and we're going to be living in a world of stories. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think 
we'll get to that because they reckon we're going to get to it this year. Essentially, it comes down to our behaviour. So these apps, don't forget, are watching what we as consumers do and the time of, uh, time of day that we're spending on there and the amount of time in a day that we're spending on there. And they make those business decisions. So essentially what you've seen with Facebook and Instagram is Facebook's 15 years old. I know that's hard to believe, but they've learned a lot of lessons about what they created and the content and the creation of that and the consumption of that. So they're trying not to make that same mistake with Instagram and already we're fatigued. So me, consumer, I haven't got time to scroll through two platforms, especially when those platforms can be the same content. That's really annoying. Mm -hmm. um, I catch up on Facebook, I jump on Insta and it's exactly the same. That's boring. And for Facebook, that's just going to lose the money. So do I think they will get rid of the feed? Yeah, absolutely. And stories are about in the now and where I am today. Whereas Facebook in the past has always been a shrine of remembrance mm -hmm. is how I look at it. It's like, you know, building your memory box or your time capsule. And actually that was something that happened with our aged parents mm -hmm. and not necessarily something that the new generation wants. We don't necessarily need nor want this documented piece of technology that is going to make us relive everything that perhaps our parents shared about us too. So we think about posting our children, well their life is already very public from the day they're born and they might not want that. That's a very good point because I was researching about you know whether it's good or bad to delete content yeah. from your feed, specifically Instagram. And um, the things that I kind of uncovered was that the younger generations actually, you know, they curate their information and as soon as, you know, it's six months old, it's like that, it's kind of like they're Madonna, they've reinvented themselves. Absolutely. And so they delete any history because they don't want you to see, you know, old, out of date in their mind versions of themselves. Yeah. Um, whereas, I don't know, our generation, um, I do think of it as like, you know, like a photo album or, and, and you know, we don't change in what we look like um, you know from year to year so dramatically as a teenager so it's really interesting that different dem um, generations are approaching it in different ways and using it for different oh, reasons. Absolutely and what I see with the younger generation is they have an opportunity to reinvent themselves the same way we did when we were younger we just did it in a different way and I quite like the nostalgia as well and I dare say when younger people get a little bit older they're going to want to look back fondly on some of their life and creations but for us in our, our generation it is very much a you know as a younger person we demonstrated our personalities and our growth and our evolution through our clothes and our shoes and you know you either wore converse or dock boots and that kind of had the statement of who you were and now that's actually been replaced by Instagram uh, and the visual aspect that people can create so I'm not that surprised that some people want to go oh well just erase that memory because when I was in my mid-twenties I too wanted to erase that memory but now I look back fondly and go my gosh I love living through those times but generations change.